And this is it, the Ultimate Issues Hour, the third hour of my show every Tuesday. If you don't get the big issues right, you won't get the little issues right. That's why we have an Ultimate Issues Hour. And they're not talked about often enough. What we have is, you know, people become very involved, totally understandably, in the daily struggles of life. Kids, marriage, friends, job, financial addictions, sickness, and the list list is very long of things that can preoccupy us as life goes on, and then we forget about the great issues, and it's it's not a good thing. And uh, likewise, you can't uh, get, the as I said, the little issues right if you don't get the big ones. So we, we have an ultimate issues hour, and it's been very, very successful. Today's uh, ultimate issue is how do you shop for a religion? Let's say you realize that a life without religion is simply emptier. It is. There's no, there's no question about it. I'm not saying you can't be a good person. You can. There are good people who have no religion. And, I, and we surely know that there are bad people who do have religion. That's understood. But life without religion is emptier. Uh, you know, it's, it's not meant to offend the non-religious. It's just a fact. Here, I'll give you a a secular example, all right? Life without reading is emptier. Would you all agree to that? Is that fair? If you deny that, then you deny that there's such a thing as a deeper life. How about life without music is emptier? Life without love is emptier. But there are good people who don't have a love in their life. There are good people without music. There are good people who don't read much, all right? So I'm not talking about whether you can be a decent human being. I'm, I'm, I'm merely making a very matter-of-fact, very commonsensical claim. Life without religion is more shallow, is less deep, is, is in fact, less wonderful. Good re- There's no replacement for good religion. Although people try, what they do is they have secular ideologies that replace it, or they have bad religion. There's good religion and bad religion. Maybe I should say there's life without good religion is emptier. How's that? So having said that, having said that, having said that, I would like to try to answer the question of if you do decide, you know what, I'd like to give religion a try. It does seem, it does seem to have great benefits. Where do you look? If you are not currently involved in a religion, or you rejected the one that you grew up in, and you, and you are in that group which is ever growing okay, in America but, oh, called that's none. That's wonderful. N O N E. What do you do? Where do you start? Now a lot of people will say what you do is you look for truth. You look for what religion is true. That's not my that's not my first uh, argument for how to find a religion. Uh, because if that's the case, then I have nothing to say. So where, wherever you see, wherever you feel that you have uh, found the truth, then go. And there's nothing. There's nothing for me to advise. Right? Just you'll uh, it'll it'll dawn on you one day that religion A is true and religions B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K are not. So I will take the religion that is true. I have a different. Uh, I have a different set of recommendations. My, uh, I, my first, my first of all, my first recommendation is that you rethink the religion that you grew up in, that you grew up in, for a whole host of practical reasons. I think that the first thing you should do is rethink the one you rejected. 
after you do that, you may in fact still say, look, I, I just can't, I can't, I don't find it tenable. I don't, uh, I don't want to consider myself a, and then fill in the religious name. That's possible. But I would ask you as an adult, because most of the time the religion that you've rejected, you reject it as a young person, maybe even as a teenager. Well, you're not a teenager and you're not a young person. You're not a 20-year-old anymore. And uh, you uh, might uh, might therefore want to reconsider it. And I have dealt with this uh, at least once. It's just worth noting, if you are looking for a religion with which you agree 100%, you will never be active in a religion. You will join no religion. Just like if you are looking for a candidate with whom you agree 100%, you will never vote. There is no candidate with whom you agree 100%, and there probably isn't a religion with which you will agree 100%. That, that's, it's not possible. The only religion that would, with which you'd agree 100% of the time is one you made up. And if you wish to make up a religion, more power to you. America has all of that. Make a religion, and if it does uh, does good and uh, elevates people morally and spiritually and uh, emotionally, intellectually, that's great. More power to you. I'm all for it. But the chances of your doing so are minimal. And so you pretty much have to choose among those that exist. And in America, you have a cornucopia of choices. So then how do I recommend you do it? So again, recommendation number one is look into the religion that you rejected. And the reasons I said are practical. The odds are most of your family is involved in that religion. I don't mean immediate, but extended as well. Your friends, your social milieu uh, that you grew up in and why not feel comfortable amongst them if you can? That's an obviously a big, if you can intellectually, if you can emotionally, and if you can theologically. So that's the first, my first recommendation. See if you are absolutely certain you cannot be involved, you cannot call yourself by the name of the religion that you grew up in. So now let's say that you can't, And then how do you shop for a religion now that you are an adult? Well, I would offer the following recommendations. I am a big believer in, by their fruit shall ye judge them. I want you to look at the products of religions and think, you know what? By and large, I I have been impressed with the people who adhere to this religion. And uh, I would like to look into that further because I like the life that they have made, that that religion has made possible or at least aided in making possible in the lives of its adherents. That, that's, a, that's a big deal. Uh, I, in fact... To me, that's the biggest deal. It's the biggest deal no matter what. What does that religion produce? Maybe I'll do an Ultimate Issues Hour one day on the whole issue of religious truth. Because I I probably have a slightly different view than a lot of people. I think what is true is that God wants us to be good, as Micah 6.8 puts it. Oh man, has God told you what he wants? To pursue justice, love mercy, or pursue mercy, love justice, I always forget which the order is, and walk humbly with your God. And the founders were very much, uh, I, I have the religion largely of the founders, for whom ethical monotheism, based on the Hebrew Bible in particular, was so essential. All right, 1-8 Prager 776, how do you shop for a religion if you are currently not an adherent of one? That's the topic of this edition of the Ultimate Issues Hour on the Dennis Prager Show.
This recommendation, as I made clear, is look to the religion in which you were raised. Now, if you were raised with no religion or cannot accept the religion or simply even after study as an adult do not wish to identify with the religion with which you grew up, then you are a nun, N-O-N-E. There are many of them in America. A religious life done well, that's critical to add that, is a better life, is a deeper life. Gives you a community. People need a community. People need other people. People need ritual. People need faith. People need a scripture. People need all of the things that good religion gives you. So how do you look for one? My first recommendation is, again, you are presuming, I'm presuming you are an N-O-N-E. My first recommendation is look at the fruit. My second is study and see which makes the most sense to you. It doesn't mean that you you believe every tenet, which makes the most sense. That's a very important aspect to me at any rate. The intellectual is an exceedingly important aspect of religion. Okay, let's go to some of your calls, and we begin with uh, Alex in Greenville, South Carolina. Thanks for calling, Alex. Dennis Prager. Well, hello, Dennis. This is indeed an honor. First time, long time. Thank you for both. Thank you. I wish we could sit together in front of your stereo with some classical or jazz in the background, you smoking your cigar, and you with a cup of coffee, and we have our Bibles, and we can really discuss this. But we've only got a moment. Um, now... This is ultimate issues hour, so here's the bottom line. All religions ultimately deal with not the temporal, but the spiritual, which is the afterlife. Point number one. So point number two is, because they deal with the afterlife, essentially we're talking about salvation. How do you get to heaven? And so that really, in my opinion, is the most important thing. Therefore, the quest for truth should be paramount. Not the fruits that are produced on this earth, because as a Christian, I believe, and you probably do too as a Jew, that uh, mankind has fallen. Now, in the Christian religion, you don't really begin to produce fruits, per se, until you are saved. So the the salvation comes first. So, and and I I definitely agree that logic, and I, I, I study apologetics. And for me, logic's, logic is very, very powerful when it comes to deciding what is true. You know, you, know, you have the, um, the different rules uh, that apply to logic, like the law of a non-contradiction and things of that nature, which you can apply to all religions and apply to all truth claims. So uh, even though, uh, I, also I believe that God does not necessarily want us to be good so much as he wants us to be holy. And... And if people can be quote unquote good without religion, as you and I both know, and you've stated before several times, and so ultimately the quest for religion should not be what is what makes you feel good here on the planet. It's how are you going to be saved? How are you going to get to heaven? Because if you're searching for a religion, then obviously you've um, taken that first step. You believe there's an afterlife. And All right. So once All again, right. You've been very eloquent, Alex. Uh, obviously, you've thought this through, and I and that's why I didn't want to interrupt you at all. That's, I think, not I think, clearly, Alex gave the answer from a, a traditional uh, Christian perspective, and I honor it. I, I do think that God cares deeply, and I'm not saying Alex doesn't, but I want to reemphasize, because uh, the issue did arise in his comments, I do believe that God cares deeply about how we act on this earth. In fact, the silence, the relative silence of the Hebrew Bible, which is, of course, the, the basis ultimately of Christianity as well, but the, the Hebrew Bible is relatively silent on the, on the afterlife, and it is so, not because it rejects it. There's no question that there's an afterlife if there is a God. I mean, no, logically, forget faith-wise, and that uh, Jews always believed it. But uh, the 
the reason for this silence was that all religions surrounding the Jews 3,000 years ago were preoccupied with the afterlife. And the Hebrew Bible, which is part of the reason the founders were so enamored of the Hebrew Bible, was preoccupied, said, God cares what happens on this earth. Why would God have made this, this world if he cared, didn't care about this physical world in which we live? Also, I have another argument for God's preoccupation with how we act in this world. God is our Father in heaven, and those of you who are fathers or mothers on earth, which is most of you, I assume, or many of you, you know how important it is how your children treat each other. Well, I I think that the analogy holds true for God. Just as you care as a parent how your children treat each other, in some ways more than you care how they treat you. Nothing brings a parent more joy than seeing their kids enjoying and loving each other. And it gives a lot of pain to parents when kids are estranged from each other. That's how God feels. And, of course, finally on the salvation issue, obviously there, there are, even if that is the primary consideration for the shopping for religion question, which is the question of this Ultimate Issues Hour, if you are a nun, N-O-N-E, shopping for religion, how do you do it? Even if salvation is your primary question, you, you then have the question of how it is attained. And is it attained through your good works on earth, or is it attained through uh, ultimately an act of faith? And that's a faith question as much as it is any other. So, the question on the table is, if you do not have a religion now, and you will not go back to the religion in which you were raised, or you were raised in none, how do you shop for one? Since we live on earth, I think the first question for me, this is a very personal hour in some ways, is what are the fruits? What type of people does this religion produce? You're listening to the Dennis Prager Show, the Ultimate Issues Hour, and we return in a moment. I'm Dennis Prager, and this is the Ultimate Issues Hour, the third hour of my show each Tuesday. Shopping for a religion, that's the subject of today's Ultimate Issues Hour. If you are a nun, N-O-N-E, not N-U-N, if you are an N-U-N, you already have a religion. But if you are an N-O-N-E, an increasingly large number of Americans are... But you realize that a religious life is simply deeper, a life with religion. Let's put it that way. There's no question. And if you're offended by that, that means you went to college and learned to be offended at an idea that is not offensive. I think you're deeper if you have music. I think you're deeper if you read. I think you're deeper if you get married. Is that offensive? Well, again, if you went to graduate school, they're all offensive. I mean that literally. I do not mean that as a as a put down. It is a put down, but I don't mean it as such. I mean it as a description of reality at our pathetic universities. It's a deeper life to have religion, to have scripture, to have a connection to a religious community, to go to a service each week. It's deeper, it's better, it's richer. Seven days a week to have for uh, for work and and shopping is not is not the same as once a week, let alone more, of going to a religious service with fellow adherents. Why have I not mentioned more about faith? I'll tell you why. Clearly, if you come to believe in a religion, that that answers the question. Then you you're not a nun anymore. You're you're an adherent. But uh, what what if you, but not what if you, (laughs) what if it takes a very long time till, or, or maybe never till you have complete faith? So you'll have no religion? I am, I am 
giving this to people who are obviously not faith-based right now. So until you get faith, you should have no religion. I think that's absurd. Of course, ideally, you, you come to the faith of the religion. But religion is more than faith. If religion were just faith, there would be no churches, no synagogues, no temples. You just have faith and move on. And there are people, by the way, who believe that. That's all you need. That's it. There's nothing else. We don't need community. We don't need uh, anything uh, in terms of a, uh, a prayer, house of prayer or a meeting house. I don't, I don't share that view. So if for those of you who come to a faith, the question has been answered. You will, you will adhere to the religion in, in whose faith you share. But what if you don't have faith, which is the true for every one of you, that is N-O-N-E. Are, are, you going to, are you going to be religionless until you believe in one faith? Then you may be religionless for much of your life, if not all of it. That's the reason that I am not mentioning that as my, my, uh, my first criterion. Okay, let's go to uh, more of your calls. Tyler in Dallas, Texas. Hello, Tyler. Dennis Prager. Hi, Dennis. I, uh, I'm, kind, I'm actually kind of emotional right now just because I've, I love you so much on just hmm. all the good that you've done in well, this world. And I, well, I'm, I do hope. I'm deeply touched by that. Please know that. Thank you. And as I was pondering upon this, this great topic, I was thinking of uh, two experiences in my life that really were poignant in, in uh, helping me make this decision on, on the, what, what faith I would pursue. And one was a, a funeral of a, an individual who I knew for probably about 10 years who just lived a life of service and and. It was just incredible to go to that service at, at, at his funeral and to, to witness all the people who rejoiced in his life and all the people that he touched. And and obviously, I was one of those who I, I resolved it. And you that. went you went as a non-religious person. No, I was I was religious. I, oh, okay. All right. Tell me so. Tell me the rest when we get back. We shall return. Dennis Prager, Ultimate Issues Hour. Hello, everybody. You're listening to The Dennis Prager Show. Third hour each Tuesday is the Ultimate Issues Hour. The subject today is if you have no religion and you are thinking of finding one, shopping for one, as I put it, how would you go about it? That's the topic. I will review my suggestions later. Let's return to the call of Tyler in Texas. In Dallas. Hi, Tyler. Okay, so you were attending a funeral for someone who had deeply touched your life. And how does this pertain to shopping for a religion? Well, I think it primarily he led a life within the context of, you know, his, his religion that had a lot of, if you will, rules and, and obligations that helped him develop the character that he, he did obtain. And and it it was very enticing to me. I, I mean, again, I was grew up in a religion, but uh, I didn't. I would I would have considered myself a very selfish, uh, really focusing on me for you know a few decades of my life, and it changed my perspective because I I knew how much he didn't look. You know, he looked outward and and spent his time serving within the church. And, right. and uh, this had an effect on you. Absolutely. It did. Yeah. So it, you're you're really part of my belief uh, that, uh, and I thank you again for your kind comments earlier on your call. Again, I, I, my first suggestion is look to the religion that you grew up in, if you still can accept that, is to, in shopping for a religion, look to the fruits. What What group or what type of people does that religion produce? And if that's inspiring, and every religion has bad apples, but if the question is if it's a bad apple or the dominant apple is bad or the dominant apple is mediocre or the dominant apple is decent and good, then that should be a factor. 
If you're waiting for faith to come to you, full faith, you may be waiting forever and have lost a life in which you could have a community and a religious experience. See, that's uh, now obviously, if you come to the faith of any given religion, then that that ends the issue, doesn't it? You believe it's true, and that's the end. That's fine. But uh, for many people, that's not uh, likely uh, to happen for those who have been raised, in particular those who have been raised secular. I do want to comment on one other thing uh, that Tyler said, and that was uh, how the religion had made him so much giving and that he, Tyler, felt that he had been much more selfish. Secular society breeds selfishness. Uh, it and especially uh, the dominant, uh, uh, the dominant progressive ideas of of society, because it is, it's the antithesis of religion. Good religion, and I'm talking about good progressivism, not bad. Good religion makes you obligations oriented. Good progressivism makes you rights oriented. What are my rights? Uh, I grew up religious. I am religious. And it was all, what about, what are my obligations? That's, that was religion about. This is, these are your obligations. I learned about rights when I went to college. I learned about obligations when I went to religious school. All righty. Oh, we had two uh, Mormon callers who both just gave up. Uh, uh. Uh, it's, um, I'll tell you this. I, I will say in light of the fact that there were two Mormon callers who just uh, just hung up and I was about to take one of them, that uh, I am impressed with the fruits of, uh, of Mormonism. The Mormons that I have met have been quite impressive. They're humans with flaws. That's, that's the human condition. Within the human condition, they have been impressive. Their family life has been. The, the ban on cigars would be very, very difficult for me. I can handle the ban on pork products and shellfish much more easily than I can the ban on cigars. But in any event, I guess I wouldn't have started had I been raised Mormon. Uh, but certainly, if fruits alone were an issue, I would uh, Mormonism would be in the running. It's not the only criterion for choosing a religion, but uh, it, certainly from that perspective, I, I, kudos to American Mormons. And for that matter, the Mormons that I have met uh, abroad. And believe me, when I have been in third world countries and seen a Mormon uh, church, temple, uh, I, I have assumed that the members there uh, were not quite as corrupt as uh, so many are in third world countries. That was my assumption. Okay, and let's go to Kevin in Joliet, Indiana. Hello, Kevin. Thank you for calling. Hi, Dennis. Thank you so much for taking my call. Yes, sir. I love listening to your show every day on the way home from work. Good. Um, although on this topic, I don't 100% agree. I, I would even suggest that, you know, people, if they don't have a religion, that they don't shop around for one. Um, I, uh, I think to assume that people that don't have religion lead meaningless unfulfilled lives. Is, well, I didn't uh, say mean. I said more. No, no, it's not fair. I didn't say that. I, but I will say that with, if there is no God, life is meaningless. That doesn't mean that the secular individual can't find meaning in love and in children and in, in, a, in, a, in, in their work. I mean, I, of course, I know that. But ultimately, if there isn't a God, you need to be intellectually honest and acknowledge that life is meaningless. Well, I think it's a matter of perspective. I mean, you, you could say without God, life is meaningless, but I suppose that, and I'm a bit of a theorist, I like to subscribe to many different possibilities. I sort of like to entertain the idea that the universe is simply sort of uh, a place for manifestation, and that the universe is full of infinite possibilities, and each one of us are an expression of a possibility. And so that for, therefore... You know, that in turn gives us meaning, and, you know, the purpose of life is to simply express uh, a possibility, and, you know, our lives are blank slates. You know, we can choose to make anything out of our lives. And well, I, 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 I agree with that last thing, but, I mean, I think, look, if there's no God, it's all a coincidence. You can speak about other theories, but it's just a fluke, and then you die, and for eternity, there's no you. Back in a moment. That I can see. Give me a touch that I can feel. Turn me around so I can see. 
Stay on if I don't uh, get to call you, because I'm going to try to summarize some of them. And uh, Kevin, uh, you still there? Yeah. So, Kevin, I, I I wish we had an hour, actually, just you and I. I, I would like to convince you, because you're obviously thoughtful and you have some respect for me, so there's a good combination. Uh, I agree. Thank you. Right. Well, <laughs> good. I'm glad. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I... I want you to I want you to wrestle with the fact that if there is no God, and I'm not trying to convince you that there is, I, I, I want to convince you only, not of a faith statement, but of a fact. Meaning a meaningful universe is dependent upon a meaningful creator. If it's all coincidence, you are nothing more than a self conscious rock. In a sense, yeah. I, I... I don't necessarily claim that there is no God. I, I'm of the perspective that uh, I, I would like to believe that there is, but I don't have any strong. All right. You know, well, even that's all right. Even that's a good sign. So all I would say is, in light of the subject of this ultimate issues hour, that you you give religion a chance and keep your and, and retain your questions, but it is a richer life. It just is. How could it not be to elevate Sunday in the case of Christianity, Saturday in the case of Judaism? Uh, it's just not another football day or another shopping day or another work day. To to bring the holy into one's life, these these are very big deals. So anyway, is about shopping for religion. And Todd in Cleveland found Catholicism, and let's see, less of a community feeling. Used to be a Baptist. You need to find a religion that serves you. Well, yeah, I'm. Uh, it's not your words necessarily, but we have to serve it too, obviously. Anyway, Daniel in Reno, Nevada, and Matt in Sterling Heights, Michigan, and Gregory in Sacramento, and Lewis in Phoenix. All important calls, and it's the pain of the talk show host that he can't take them all. But please consider my thinking and do shop for a religion. It's not deep being a nun, N-O-N-E. I'm Dennis Prager. This has been the Ultimate Issues Hour. 